We welcome you back to CBS This Morning. Only on CTM, we're hearing from the first woman to be named a four-star Coast Guard Admiral. It is her first network TV interview since taking the job. Admiral Linda Fagan has worn the uniform for 40 years. She served everywhere from glaciers of Antarctica to Tokyo and New York Harbor with a lot of other ports along the way. Our Catherine Herridge spent some time with her on the water and she joins us now from along the Potomac River near Washington. Catherine, good morning. David, after 9-11, the Coast Guard was moved into the Department of Homeland Security, where it has a broad domestic and international portfolio. The need has never been greater. At a time, the force is undergoing profound change. When you first set foot on a boat like this, did you imagine you would become the vice commandant, the number two position at the Coast Guard? Absolutely not. Admiral Linda Fagan's journey to a position overseeing some 40,000 Coast Guardsmen has taken her to all seven continents. Homeland security is not a home game. There's an away game component to it, and we operate in both the home game and the away game. Cruising past the Potomac's iconic shoreline earlier this summer, Fagan described a mission that combines policing with the might of a military service. It is about presence and law enforcement, much more than, uh, you know, like our Navy counterparts talk about. While addressing the needs of an evolving force. I look at um, some of the policy changes that are helping us retain women, uh, the focus on diversity and inclusion so that we better uh, represent the public that we serve. Before getting on the water, and, uh, we're going to go to the left. CBS News I spent the morning with the Admiral at Coast Guard headquarters with rare access to the daily operations brief. Gust up to 130 miles per hour. Okay. We always start with the weather. We're a seagoing service. In the ceremonial hall, we sat down for the Admiral's the first ball. network TV interview since starting the job in June. What's the biggest misconception? We are globally deployed, and I think that that is probably a misconception. Well, you're the Coast Guard. Shouldn't you just be along the coast? That includes responding to migrants, fleeing the ongoing crises in both Cuba and Haiti. There are 20 people that we know have uh, lost their lives in the last month in those attempts. High-risk missions intercepting drugs. It's life-saving work. These are narcotics that don't reach the shores of the U.S. and then result in, in drug overdoses. And ensuring safe passage for global trade. Your concern is a cyber attack and, and the ripple effect on the supply chain. Shipping. Absolutely, yes, yeah. Disruption of the supply chain in a way that then begins to, you know, impact our just way of life. Everyday consumers. Everyday consumers, yep. As I said, it's uh, the Nikes get here, uh, they get here on a ship in a container. At 18, Fagan enrolled at the Coast Guard Academy, just a few years after service academy doors were open to women. After graduation, Fagan nearly got bumped from her first tour. At the time, the executive officer, when I did my in-brief, uh, was like, actually, we, we thought about canceling your orders. We didn't want only one woman on board. And thankfully, they did not. And it was an incredible uh, first tour for me, really impactful for everything that came after that. Three minutes. Women That's now make up 15 percent, and minorities roughly 30 percent of the Coast Guard's active duty force. But at the Admiral's morning briefing, we noticed she was still the only woman at the table. So we've made a lot of progress in the junior ranks. We need to keep making progress. We do not yet reflect the society who we serve, and, and we, need to, we need to keep working on that. With a daughter serving in the Coast Guard, it's personal for Fagan, who says assistance with things like relocation and daycare are making a difference for this generation. As particularly women face, you know, career and family choices, that we make it easier for them to envision themselves still still serving with this incredible organization. As our tour concludes, Fagan reflected on the gravity of her mission. You know, I've taken an oath to uh, protect and defend the Constitution. And charting the course for the next generation. I recognize I am now providing a set of shoulders for those who will come after. Admiral Fagan is just the third woman to be vice commandant of the Coast Guard. Fagan said their service has paved the way for hers, and now it's her turn to pay it forward. Anthony.
Congratulations to the Admiral, Catherine. Thank you. And but still the only woman at the table, as you point out. We'll be right back.